Hello, my name is John Sims with the Advised Serviceability Engineering Team. This video is about how to handle some SSL VPN onboarding or registration modifications and a look at SSL VPN tracing. So starting with the 8.1 release, built into the product you can use web management to handle your onboarding of a GRT delivered onboarding file but you can also use the same web management to modify an existing SSL VPN onboarding session or launch into GRT to also handle a simple SSL VPN password reset. The other thing to focus on in this video is a look at system monitor tracing which has been updated in release 8.1 to include tracing elements for SSL VPN and I will show you one unique condition that exists right now for the 8.1 release when registering the server edition. This will quickly require a manual edit which I'll show of the inventory XML file with the proper material code for use with GRT. So let's jump right into tracing together. You'll see the SSL VPN is clearly marked in the trace with a nice green font and you see that it's connecting or connected. So what I'll show you here is we have the new filter trace options and I'll go to the VPN tab and then I'll default all so you'll see what is selected is usually just session and session state. In our case for this work we're about to do together today I'm going to also set the configuration element tracing element so I'll select that here and then I'll click OK. So now it's time to foul up a configuration so we see what it looks like in the trace. I'm going to quickly pull a configuration from my test unit and I'll head to the service Avaya support where I've onboarded and I'll change the account password to just something that is incorrect of course and then I'll save up the configuration. So you'll see my steps here. I'm on purpose fouling up a previously good onboarded SSL VPN tunnel. So we'll head back into System Monitor, Sysmon, and give it a moment here. And you'll see right there in, in red font that we have a SOX5 user password fail indicating trouble with our connection. If I head into SSA and log in and pull configuration data, we'll let that occur. I'll head to IP Networking, SSL VPN, and I have that tunnel but you see we don't have anything connected if I go into more details of the tunnel which I'll show you here we do not even though it's in service we do not have a tunnel IP address so nothing is resolved nothing is working and that is a we can relate right back to the fact that we have a password failure in the configuration so I'm now going to showcase a self-service option to correct this if I point my web browser back at the products LAN address and then I accept the certificate and I'll be met with a first landing page and I'll click on web management and again accept the certificate. I'm now going to log in once this loads into the IP Office Web Manager. So I'll furnish the proper credentials to log in as you see me doing so and I'll select login. Once we, and I'm letting this run real time so you'll see that it takes a bit of time to pull up the full web manager. I'll go to tools onboarding and as we've been here previously we've seen that we've already registered the onboarded the system so we have a modify option and that's the option I'll make use of today. It's going to launch a specialized page of global registration tool. I'll log in with my SSO account just as you would and you're met with some with a unique set of question here. It's existing IP office SSL VPN remote connectivity. So you see we're going to make use of this link by clicking on it. We have two options, password reset or regenerate the onboarding file. A note about password reset, that's when you're working with a live support engineer. The live support engineer might come in and enact this option to then update the password on the fly. We'll receive notification in our systems and then we can work with you directly to reset the password. Otherwise, for the self-service option, you'll select regenerate onboarding file and then furnish your email address of which you'd like this onboarding file sent to and before you click submit you have to give it the VPN account name 
Again, that VPN account name, as you look at SSA, you see it noted as account name from the previous onboarding, and I'm clicking on it there. And even though you have, you have an in-service tunnel, the other option is to pull it from the configuration because even though the tunnel is technically down right now that account name is still valid and still being used that's the account name to reference so we plug that into GRT and select yes and selecting yes will allow GRT to process the request and as you see here you'll get a pop-up telling you that you will receive your notification shortly and your regeneration request was successful Now, like previous registrations, in your inbox, you'll receive a notification from GRT that the registration status is complete and you'll receive your onboarding file. So then I'll have to save that to my file system to make proper use of it. So if I go back into the web management now, I can upload this new onboarding file. You cannot click upload until you browse and select the file, which I'll do now. I'll select the file I saved out of the email and I'll hit upload and onboarding is successful. You've now re-onboarded the system. Okay, I'm going to show you a normal condition. If we head back into SSA and click on the tunnel, you'll see we still don't have a tunnel IP address. It's going to take about a minute or so till the re-registration of the tunnel occurs. So we'll watch carefully with System Monitor and again you see the SSL VPN elements in green and you'll see here I've highlighted it we have a falling back to TCP and we are connected and as we head back to SSA you see here that we have been reissued a tunnel IP address and everything is in fact reconnected so as mentioned at the start of the video there is one inventory XML edit required for the server editions the IP Office Linux Server Editions. The material code is missing in the inventory file, so I'll go to that code section, which stands for Material Code, and we'll add this in manually, 270393. Then I'll save the inventory.xml file. Now we'll make use of this updated inventory XML file with GRT. As you see me now running through it very quickly, I'll enter a sold to number for a new registration acting as a business partner I'll say yes select new registration I'll run through this quickly in real time let the video run and you'll see where in this case I'll provide my telephone number and on-site contact I'll say is the same as above which will pull in all my information from above I'll give it a proper cutover date and tell it that it's an IP office 8.1 install or greater and I'll select next and from this we're going to again pick our questions answer our questions on type of installation industry number of employees and I'll make use of the inventory file that's been updated for the file upload section if I scroll down you'll see now that I have a material code 270393 and a proper serial number which will pull in from the inventory file for the DL360 G7 server for the IP Office Server Edition primary. And I will click Submit and yes, that we want to continue with this technical registration. And I'll again letting the video run real time. You see GRT doing its work and that the base request is submitted and you'll receive notification shortly. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.